Light can be modeled in two ways, as particles and as packages of energy. Neither model fully expresses light's dualistic nature. Photons are invisible packages of energy. As the wavelength of light decreases, the energy carried by each photon increases. Photons in the ultraviolet region possess enough energy to displace electrons within neutral molecules, converting them into positively charged particles or free radicals. Low-dose UV radiation is essential for the production of vitamin D in human skin. Unless our food sources are high in vitamin D, which many Arctic species are, we need sunlight to be healthy. UV radiation is even used to treat some skin conditions. Extended exposure, however, can damage the skin, the eye, and the immune system. Human skin is resilient to low overdoses of exposure to UV light by repairing and replacing damaged molecules. However, that resilience has limits. The most deadly form of skin cancer, melanoma, is linked to ultraviolet radiation exposure. The intensity of ultraviolet radiation at the Earth's surface is closely linked to levels of ozone in the stratosphere, which is related to latitude because of variations in the ozone layer. Many factors affect the intensity of ultraviolet radiation and all incoming solar radiation at the Earth's surface. Variables such as atmospheric moisture, season, sunspot activity, and Earth's distance from the sun are all constantly changing, but at very different scales. Clouds come and go in minutes, while various cycles take tens of thousands of years. Oxygen is a very reactive molecule. It makes up 21% of the atmosphere as a diatomic molecule written O2. The oxygen cycle is very complex and ties in with the carbon cycle through photosynthesis and respiration. Oxygen is constantly exchanged between the atmosphere and water bodies in what is known as the surface layer. The Chapman cycle illustrates a steady-state condition. In a steady-state system, the rates of input and output determine the concentration of the molecules in the system. CFCs are carbon fluorocarbons. They are also called halogen-aided organic compounds because both chlorine and fluorine are halogen elements. CFCs were designed to make a safe, cheap, non-reactive gas for a variety of uses, but it turned out they had unintended side effects. Chlorine can act as a catalyst. One chlorine atom can break down over a thousand molecules. Catalysts speed up the rate of reaction by reducing the activation energy and changing the set of reactions that occur. This is the smoking gun. The relationship between increasing chlorine monoxide and decreasing ozone supports the hypothesis of chlorine as a catalyst. 